So Eddie Hearn is getting all sorts of carried away following this Fury and Garnu fight. He's saying that Anthony Joshua would knock out Tyson Fury inside six and knock out Ngannou inside three. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua's last two fights were against Jermaine Franklin and Robert Hellenius, and both guys took him more than six rounds. So are we really to believe that a guy who couldn't take out Jermaine Franklin or Robert Hellenius inside six is gonna take the Gypsy King out inside six? Now look, it's heavyweight boxing, anything can happen, but do you really think Eddie Hearn believes what's coming out of his mouth right now? Or do you think it's just hype talk? Because as far as I'm concerned, I think it's just hype talk from Eddie Hearn. I don't think he really believes all this stuff that he's coming out with. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't read his mind, but this is typical behavior from a promoter and certainly from Eddie Hearn. And yes, styles make fights. Maybe Anthony Joshua's got a style that would do well against Tyson Fury. The problem with Anthony Joshua isn't so much his style and the stuff he's learning under Derek James. James. It's his mind, as we all know. His confidence is rock bottom. You could argue that perhaps after seeing Fury struggle against Ngannou, that'll boost Anthony Joshua's confidence. Maybe so, but I can only go off what we've seen in his recent performances. And in his recent performances, we've seen a mentally broken fighter, a guy who doesn't have supreme confidence. And I don't care who you are, if you don't have supreme confidence, you're not gonna beat the Gypsy King. And that's the thing that Ngannou certainly appeared to have, is pure confidence. On the way to the ring, when they were facing off, during the referee's instructions, during the fight itself, Ngannou just seemed completely confident in himself and what he was doing. He was able to avoid Fury's jab, when he did get hit with a right hand, he was able to take it no problem. In fact, there was one point where he actually got hit with a clean elbow in the face. It even looked intentional by Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury isn't really a dirty fighter. I've said this on many occasions. And look, I've been critical of Tyson Fury over the years. But one thing I've always said is he's not really a dirty fighter. I'm not saying he's the cleanest fighter in the world, but compared to many other heavyweights out there, many other fighters out there, Tyson Fury is relatively clean, but that elbow was dirty. It looked intentional from the slow-mo against Ngannou. And Ngannou took that elbow without any issues as well. So it would seem as though he's got good whiskers, Francis Ngannou. And that's something that Anthony Joshua can't be charged with. He doesn't have the greatest chin. He doesn't have the worst chin in the heavyweight division, but he doesn't have a great chin. Combine that with a lack of confidence, Again, doesn't matter how much talent and skill he has, if you don't believe in yourself, when you step in that squared circle, then it's all for nothing. And Tyson Fury, well, does he believe in himself a little bit less after the Ngannou fight? I don't think he was in the greatest shape in the Ngannou fight, truth be told. He was at a career heaviest. If he fought Anthony Joshua, I'd expect him to be in much better shape, in much better form, much sharper. And based on Anthony Joshua's last two fights, the Gypsy King would be in against the guy who isn't super supremely confident. But that's just my take on it. Give me your take in the comment section below. Maybe you agree with Eddie Hearn. Maybe you think Anthony Joshua right now really would take out Tyson Fury inside six and Francis Ngannou inside three. I mean, Francis Ngannou inside three is more realistic as far as I'm concerned than taking out the Gypsy King inside six. I know some people will be up in arms about that statement, but I want to see more from Francis Ngannou before I'm convinced that he's as good as some people are making him out to be. Judging him on one fight, he's got a ranking now with a WBC. He shouldn't have had the Tyson Fury fight in the first place. He shouldn't have been given that opportunity by Fury nothing against Francis Ngannou. I'm talking about from the perspective of what a heavyweight champion is supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be fighting debutants. But now that he has fought Tyson Fury and he has been given a ranking, whether he deserves it or not, it now opens the door for him to fight other heavyweights in the top 10, top 15. And if he does, I'll be very interested to see how he performs. Whether the Fury thing was a perfect storm, you know, maybe a combination of Fury not being in the best of shape, underestimating him, Ngannou's awkward, unconventional style, his physical strength, his surprising counter-punching ability with the left hook, which maybe caught Fury off guard a little bit. Who knows? But I'm still going to pick most top 10 heavyweights, if not all top 10 heavyweights, over Francis Ngannou for now. I mean, for example... Leon Spinks beat Muhammad Ali back in the days. That was his, what, seventh pro fight or something, and Muhammad Ali was heavyweight champion. This was towards the end of Muhammad Ali's career. He didn't train well for that fight. And Leon Spinks didn't go on to have a great career after that, because obviously Ali came back, beat him in the rematch. Leon Spinks really didn't do much. Even though he had an Olympic gold medal and all that, he wound up 
becoming basically a journeyman, fringe contender at best. Buster Douglas, similar thing, when he beat Mike Tyson. Just because you have one good night, it doesn't necessarily mean you're a great fighter, even if you beat a great fighter. Just as Leon Spinks beat a great fighter in Muhammad Ali, Buster Douglas beat a great fighter in Mike Tyson. Buster Douglas' career wasn't great after the, it wasn't great before the Tyson fight, but it certainly wasn't great after the Tyson fight either. Oliver McCall, similar thing. Didn't have a great career before he beat Lennox Lewis, didn't have a great career after he beat Lennox Lewis. Although though he had a better career than Buster Douglas or Leon Spinks overall, I would say, even though he actually lost to Buster Douglas. But I digress. Need to see Ngannou beat other people in the top 10 before I'm convinced. And as for Eddie Hearn, he's doing what promoters do. He's saying that they should forget about the Usyk fight, Team Fury that is, and either rematch Francis Ngannou or fight Anthony Joshua. And Hearn is also saying that Joshua's willing to fight Ngannou now since Ngannou's proven himself against Fury. He really wants to get back to Saudi, doesn't he, Eddie Hearn? He's saying nobody wants to see the undisputed fight now. That's a load of rubbish. We all want to see the undisputed fight now. In fact, it actually makes the undisputed fight more interesting because so many people were writing Alexander Usyk off. They were acting like it was a foregone conclusion that Tyson Fury would beat him. It was never the case for me, but for so many other people, that's how they saw it, like a foregone conclusion, especially after that Daniel Dubois fight. So now that Fury has struggled against Ngannou, it's changed things again. Now all of a sudden people are saying that Usyk would actually be the favorite. You see how reactionary boxing fans are? So Undisputed is more interesting now than ever. Let's get the fight on. As far as Tyson Fury needing to heal up and get in better shape and not being ready for December 23rd. Okay, well, we heard that Usyk had some injuries and whatnot and wouldn't necessarily be ready for December 23rd either. As long as they fight each other, what is it, by the end of March? That's where Riyadh season is? No problem. I don't want to see either guy having any other fights in the interim because that obviously could jeopardize Undisputed. So as long as their next fight is against each other, I'm happy. Happy. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalogue of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high-quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page, via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.